What's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be putting together an awesome all Intel gaming PC. Now, this is actually something I've been wanting to do for a little while since Intel announced their ARC GPUs. And with the help of ASRock and Intel, I'm finally able to do it. Now, for this one here, we're actually going to be using the brand new Intel ARC A770. This is the ASRock Phantom Gaming Overclock version, and yeah, I've always really liked these ASRock cards. And you know, since ASRock's been around, we've only really been able to pick up the AMD cards from them, but with the launch of Intel Arc, we've got some options when it comes to them. So yeah, like I mentioned, this is the Phantom Gaming version of the Intel Arc A770. We've got 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM, a max clock up to 2400MHz since it's the Overclock Edition from ASRock, and a beefy heatsink here, so yeah, I mean, we can definitely run this at max clocks all day long with the heatsink they've added. But yeah, it's a good looking card, we've got a little bit of RGB on it and an RGB header. Obviously, it's a triple fan design and it only takes up two slots. It'd be nice to just be able to plug power into the GPU and start gaming, but we do need some other components. And for the CPU, I opted to use the new Intel i5-13600K. This is a Raptor Lake CPU, 14 cores, 20 threads, and a boost up to 5.1 gigahertz. When it comes to the motherboard, we're going with the ASRock Z790 Tai Chi Carrera. This is an absolutely beautiful board. We've got that marble design here. This actually works with 12th and 13th gen Intel CPUs, supports DDR5, and we've got two PCIe 5.0 X16 slots here. And when it comes to I.O., it's got everything we need here, like dual Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 ports. We've also got killer 2.5 gigabit Ethernet here, and it's got onboard Wi-Fi 6. And another thing that ASRock has been including with their higher-end boards lately is the Blazing M.2 cooler. So uh, this might look a little overkill for an M.2 drive, but when these things start getting hot, they can get pretty slow. This thing here has a built-in fan. We've got plenty of metal here to keep that NVMe SSD nice and cool, and we can keep those speeds up with something like this attached. And finally, when it comes to RAM, I'm going with 32 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Renegade. This is some of the fastest that I've seen on the market, coming in at 7200 megahertz. So yeah, I'm actually really excited about this build. I've been wanting to test this new Intel Arc A770 GPU for a little while, at least the desktop variant, because I have tested the mobile version and one of the new Intel NUCs, and it's actually a great performer. But, you know, since we've got the desktop variant here that can get higher clocks and pull a little more power, I think we're going to see much better performance out of this. And in my opinion, it's just great to see somebody else come to the GPU market. You know, we've kind of been stuck between two for a little while now, and we have another option with Intel Arc. We're definitely going to need something to slap this build inside of, so I opted to use the Fantex A360. So I've used this case in the past, the black version. Personally, these are some of my favorite cases. I just love the design and the price on these. And with this case here, it's got some really great cable management. This one does come with two RGB fans up front also. But unfortunately, this case only supports up to a 280 millimeter radiator. And you know, that should be fine for the i5. But if you wanted to build an i9 in here, I would definitely go with a 360. So you'd need a much larger case. To power everything in this build, I opted for a Corsair RM750. This should be plenty for what we have. And to keep the i5-13600K cool, I'm going with an NZXT Kraken X53. This is 240mm AIO. I really wish I would have went with something a little bigger here, given I wanted to do some overclocking, but I can upgrade down the road. So I've got everything installed here, except for the ARC A770 GPU, so let's go ahead and throw that in, but so far it's looking pretty good. And once everything's installed, it looks something like this. Another thing I added was that rear fan. It actually matches the motherboard here. Love that marble design against the black. I think it actually turned out really nice. So I guess all that's really left to do here is start it up. And once I plugged it in, we've got that RGB on that ASRock motherboard. It actually looks really nice reflecting off of that black. And I know it's a bit hard to see, but this case did come with those two RGB fans up front. Now, I'm not a huge fan of decking out everything in RGB, but having a little bit does make it pop. I think it looks good. Now it's time to get into some testing, but first I gotta get this operating system set up. I'm gonna be running Windows 11 Pro here. Alright, so here it is. Everything went off without a hitch. Haven't had any issues so far. As you can see, we've got that i5-13600K. We've also got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 here running at 7000 megahertz, 
and the Intel Arc A770. The stock version of the A770 has a clock of 2200 MHz, but with this overclocked ASRock version, we're actually up to 2400 MHz. And with these new Arc GPUs, they've introduced the new Arc Control Center. You can bring this up at any time to kind of tweak and tune your games. And we've also got an in-game overlay we can bring up at any time over on the other side. Now this can all be customized to your liking, but it does work out really well with this new GPU. The first thing I wanted to do was jump right into a little bit of gaming. We've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1440p, very high, with no scaling. Now this game does support the new Intel XESS scaling, which uh, does work out great if you need a little extra. But right now, at 1440p with those very high settings, I don't even need scaling with the A770 and this Intel 13600K. By the end of my run here, we had an average of 79 FPS with no scaling. And you might notice that my uh, CPU is at 5.3 GHz. I just used Intel Tuning Utility to do a quick overclock. I've also got the Arc A770 temp and clock on screen right now. We're at 2400 MHz and this kind of sits there all day long. But yeah, I still wanted to test that Intel XESS scaling just to see what we could do here and how much it brings it up at 1440p very high. So we'll head into the settings. Obviously with the performance we're getting, we really don't even need it. I would just go ahead and lock this down at 60, but I still wanted to see what would happen here. Yeah, we'll try balanced. And already we're getting a nice little boost on that frame rate. And to tell you the truth, I don't notice much of a difference in the clarity. Uh, with these higher resolutions, at least to my eye and my monitor, I don't notice much of a difference. So it is bringing that resolution down from 1440p to allow us to get a little better performance out of it. That's how, you know, FSR works, DLSS. Also adds a little bit of sharpening. But uh, at these higher resolutions, it really doesn't make that much of a difference to the visual quality. But yeah, performance here is really great, and this is the newest AAA game I have in my library right now. So yeah, I mean, it can definitely run it at 1440p. I also like to throw at least one fighting game in these videos. So we've got Injustice 2, 4K, we're maxed out here, running at a constant 60. I had a good feeling that it was going to handle this game at 4K. Doesn't take too much. And when it comes to games like Street Fighter, Injustice, or even MK11, you'll be good to go at 4K. Cyberpunk 2077 was another one I really wanted to test with this GPU. So here it is at 1440p, high settings. And you know, we're a little over 60 here. I was actually expecting a little more out of it, but it is a harder game to run. With some scaling or, you know, even taking those settings down, we could get more. But the way it is right now, we could just go ahead and lock this down at 60 with V-Sync. Here's God of War, 1440p, ultra settings, and you know, kind of just like Cyberpunk, we're right there on the edge. I don't think we're going to dip under 60 with this game. We're getting an average of around 72 FPS out of it, and it's fully playable like this. But trying to go up to 4K with no resolution scale is kind of out of the question with this game, at least over 60. And the final game I wanted to take a look at is one of my favorites, Forza Horizon 5. So right now we're at 4K Ultra Settings. As you can see, we don't have any scaling going on whatsoever. We've also got that preset of Ultra, and yeah, it will run this at 4K Ultra Settings. We can get an average of 64 FPS out of this, so we're kind of right there on the edge. And you know, going into this with the Intel Arc A770, I figured this was going to be more of a 1440p card. So 1440p, high settings, 1080p, ultra, or using scaling, I mean, we could definitely get more out of this. But I just wanted to take this down to 1440p, still at ultra settings, no scaling, and the jump is very dramatic. So at 4K Ultra, we're getting an average of 64 FPS, but as soon as we take this down to 1440p, we can get an average of 97 FPS. I mean, it's definitely a major jump, and I kind of expected this. To tell you the truth, I don't mind playing this at 1440p over 60. It still looks absolutely amazing at 1440p Ultra, and we could probably even take this up to extreme 1440p, but yeah, I mean, it's actually running Forza Horizon 5 really well. And before we wrap this video up, the very last thing I wanted to take a look at were some GPU benchmarks using 3 d Mark. So first on the list, we've got Firestrike coming in with a total score of 29,929. 
And since we're working with an Intel GPU, I figured we'd use the new Intel XESS feature test in 3D Mark. So with this test here, we can set the XESS mode and we're at ultra quality right now. It definitely takes advantage of this because uh, with XESS off, we got an average of 30.42 FPS. With it turned on, remember we're using the ultra quality preset, 45.55 FPS, making a difference of 49%. So that XESS is really going to help you out in gaming. And the final one I ran here was Time Spy coming in with a total score of 14,211. So overall, I think the Intel Arc A770 is actually putting out some great performance, especially when you consider the price of this new card. So this is the ASRock Phantom Gaming version. These are actually going for $329. Now we're not talking about used prices or used mining card prices on eBay. Brand new here for $329, and I actually think it's a pretty good value. And if you're interested in picking up this card or any of the other parts that I used in this build, I will leave links in the description. And yeah, I mean, I'm actually really impressed with what Intel has done here with their GPUs in such a short period of time. You know, down the road, if they continue on this path, we're going to see some really powerful units come out of Intel, and personally, I can't wait. Like I mentioned, it's just really awesome to see another competitor come to the market, especially with uh, what's been going on with one of the other big ones, uh, price-wise. And I know performance is definitely going to outshine ARC right now, but, uh, you know, if you're just looking for 1080p and 1440p gaming, a card like the ARC A770 is going to work out just fine. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. Let me know what you think about this new GPU in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.